We're gonna start right from the beginning and I'm gonna show you how to download Luna, set it up, and I'm gonna give you a starting point on how to start using Luna, an overview of it, uh, just so you can get started. So to download this, you have to go to uaaudio.com slash product slash Luna. It's gonna take you to this page here. This is gonna give you all the information about Luna. If you wanna download it, you can click anywhere, download now, download free, buy Luna Pro. We're just gonna do the download Luna free. Where should I send it? Download, you can send us your email address. Log in, I already have an account. You might have to set up an account. It'll issue Luna to your account. Uh, you get to pick, uh, do you want Mac or PC? If you're PC, you select this one. I am a Mac user, so I'm gonna hit download. If you're not sure of the system requirements, you can look it up right here. There are some features that you do wanna pay attention to in the requirements. For the most part, you're probably fine, but if you wanna use the AI features in Luna, uh, you have to make sure you're using an Apple that is uh, silicon based. So now I'm gonna download UA Connect. So UA Connect is the portal that you would download Luna through. You would also get any plugins. So I'm gonna double click that file. From here, we're just gonna drag and drop this. It's probably gonna be like an older item named this already exists. Location, you wanna replace it. Um, so in this case, I'm not gonna replace it because I already have it installed, but you would probably have to go through the installation process. You can now go to UA Connect, either at the top of your screen or you will find it wherever you keep your software, UA Connect right here. Now, if you've never installed this before, you probably have a ton of plugins. You might even have some free plugins that I don't have access to anymore. There's like some trial plugins you can experiment with. I have all of these already installed because I've been using Luna. So I'm just gonna go to Luna and we're gonna go download. And you can see on the side here, you have like your interfaces, microphone. So if you have like a UA microphone or interface, this is where you would also get like software for it. So while it's downloading, I'm just gonna show you a couple things. Um, so for example, if you are interested in plugins, uh, if you click up here at the UAD plugins section, this is where you can filter by category. In this case, it's showing me all my installed plugins. These are all plugins that are available. Um, I think all of them, if not most of them are free. Now that it's downloaded, we can open it. So I'm just gonna go open. So this is the main window. This is the first window you would see, but you can also look at other things like if you wanna look at the store, what's new. So just like what we saw before, they give you a lot of options if you wanna explore plugins. We don't wanna do that. Don't worry about that for now. Manage plugins. So, oh cool. So it sees Melodyne and stuff like that that I've installed already. Uh, so I can go through and I can scan uh, just by enable, VST, three enable, uh, scan plugins, new plugins, rescan all. Something you can do, uh, we'll give it a second. So now those plugins that it scanned and it recognized, it'll now be available to me in Luna. Side we have our hardware. So this is for like, if we need to set up our interface, here we can see I have my system settings clear pre. So this is my default. If I want to use my Mac speakers, in this case, um, I can set that, apply. Like I said earlier, I don't have any universal audio hardware. Um, I'm using a Focusrite Claret Pre right now, an older one. Um, I can manage my I.O. settings, so my inputs and outputs are done here. In this case, everything's correct. I can see that I have eight inputs, and then I have my eight ats, plus like if I want to use my SPDIF inputs, I got that. Um, I also have my outputs I can manage, so if I'm routing it to the board or if I'm routing it to my patch bay, I can set that all up here. So here we have our basic settings for our track. Now, first thing I do is I set my location because it tends to remember where your last one is. I have a folder that I work out of. So in this case, if I want to go back, uh, Lady Dynamite, it's a song I'm working on. So I can go audio production, this is my folder. Um, I'm just gonna go Nick. And then here I can make a new one, cool. So I'm gonna, that's the folder I'm gonna work out of. I'm gonna call this Luna Walkthrough. template. If I have any templates saved, I can click that. I can set my tempo. So in this case, I'm just going to default it to 120. I don't know what it's going to be, but you can set that here. If I want to tap the tempo do 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 do. Sure. I'm going to say, you know what? 121. Hit enter. And there you go. We now have created our, our first session. So let's kind of talk about this window a little bit. This is the window that you'll do a lot of your work from. So in this case, at the very top, we have like our controller. Uh, and here we have different menu window options we can select from. So here we have view. I can select 
If I want to see it from a mixer mode, my edit window. I can close other windows that pop to the side. So if I don't want to see the browse tab on the side, I can close it. I can focus. If I work on one track, it'll show that there. Um, so if I click on the track, for example, if I make a new track, to make a new track, the short key is Command Shift N. We'll call it Demo 1. We'll call this Demo 2. And I must have hit it twice. So there. So focus is just showing what track we click on if we want to see just like the, the fader information. If not, who cares? You can just turn it off. Info, it's this information on the bottom. So if you want to see how your memory is running, buffer size you have selected, what's your rate. And then finally we have monitor, which is just on the side here. This is something that's interesting. This is a new feature that has come out in 1.9. This is their AI feature. If this is something you want to experiment with, what you would do is go to your help at the top. I don't know if you can see it because it's probably not screen capturing it, but at the top you would click help and then you would go to feature preview. You click on that and it'll take you to this page. You can also get to this page from when you're setting up your session. There's a feature preview on the side. You can click on that. It's going to take you to a survey. You just fill it out and then you turn on the feature. You can also turn off the feature from this window. Here, if I'll show you the create. So if you hit, if you're creating a session, preview upcoming features, but it's pretty cool. I did a video uh, reviewing them. If you want to see them, I'll put the link above to check it out. Uh, basically, you can analyze audio that you're dropping in and it'll name the tracks for you, which is really cool. And it gives you voice control. So not too bad. So back to here, um, here at the, on the control panel, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Uh, we have our BPM. I'm also gonna turn off this information thing. So if you wanna know what stuff is, uh, you can hover over it, but if you don't like it, click on this, uh, quick tour. We're just gonna turn that off. There we go, just for the sake of my sanity. Um, BPM, so you can see what we set, 121. We can change it, 120, cool. Uh, click, if you want to hear the click right there, you can adjust the volume. Accent on the one, I believe that's what that is. Count in, okay, gives you count in, cool. Uh, you got a counter, so if you want to change the counter, if you want to look at minutes, seconds, samples, I normally keep it, keep it bars and beats for when working in music, but if you need to see a counter for time, you can do that as well. You have your rewind, forward, stop, play, record, uh, loop. So if you need to loop in a row, if you're recording, um, you highlight your section, hit record and it'll loop it and then you can just create a bunch of tracks that way. Monitor output. So you can set your monitor level there as well. If you're not using your monitor output on the side, you can literally just uh, control it up here. And then your workflow. So your workflow is basically t giving you information or setting up the windows based on what you're doing. So for example, if you're in a record workflow, you select this and then it's going to give you stuff like your master data, uh, different things. You can set up your pre-roll, post-roll, uh, record mute click to cue. So if you have different headphone mixes, you can send the click to your headphone mix. You have your MIDI workflow flow set up, edit. So in this case, um, different editing options, cut, copy, paste, duplicate. So if you want to use these instead of short keys, you have that available to you. If you need a nudge, you have a nudge feature. And then finally, this would be your mix, mix workflow. Then you can do mix down. That's cool. So we're going to go back to record mode because we're just going to talk about that today. So as we said before, this section here is our browser window. Now you can close this here as well if you want to make more space or you can do that. This just gives you basic information on the tracks, so the track names. I can select that. Uh, plugins available to me if I want to see what plugins I want to drop in the track. Presets if I have any presets on the track. You can search everything, which is really handy. If you want to record, I'm going to start from the beginning and I'm going to arm the track I want to record with a DAW which is standard across the board. If I don't arm the track, if I hit record, normally I would get a warning that says, unable to record, let us, you know, arm a track. So you have to tell the computer what track is recording. So in this case, we would arm the track by record enable, enabling the track. I didn't say arm. I'm gonna keep calling it arming the track. Um, so in this case, if I wanna record that, I would mark it. I think in Luna, if I hit record, I think it's gonna do the default selected. Yeah, if I have a track selected already, it's just gonna automatically arm the track. It's gonna save you that step of that pop-up. So this is how you would do basic recording in Luna. Um, you'd arm the track. You have input enabled. If you wanna hear the instruments, let's say you need to get levels or you wanna hear it through the app, you can enable the track uh, using input monitoring. And then, so when I play, I'll get a signal through here. I can listen to it, be like yay or nay, and then I can record, which can be very handy. If you want to switch windows, there's a short key. It's command plus. 
So this is gonna allow me to go between my edit and my mix window. So let's talk about the mix window a little bit now that we're here. First thing we're gonna see is we have this, if we look at this nav strip right here, it's basically giving us a quick access to the channels. There's a lot of information on the channels you can see. So we can just click here. For example, if I wanna look at my inputs, this is what's set at the top if I need to change my inputs for any reason. I can see here on the main strip, we can have our summing. If you just downloaded this, you might have access to the Neve summing strip. I don't have it, my demo expired. You might have it. I totally recommend messing around with it. If you want to buy it, it's like $300 Canadian. I haven't had a need yet to buy it, but I do remember it was pretty awesome. So uh, maybe that's something down the road. My birthday is coming up, who knows? Scroll down, we have our utilities. So we have a trim function. So if I need to adjust the trim for anything, clarity flip right here, delay compensation. So if you have a lot of plugins running or if you have something that's causing it to delay, you can compensate right here. This is what I was talking about um, when we were setting up a new audio track. Uh, you have the option to turn on select a tape. So if you want the tape saturation already in the track, there's a section here for it. If I move down, I can, can now see the console. So if you like to have a console workflow, like use the console for your compression and your EQ, which I do actually use it a lot. Um, that's normally my default EQ and compression when I'm tracking and even mixing. I normally start with this first. So this next section here, we have our sends and our cues. If I click on sends, you can see here I can route to different bus tracks. So if I have like a, a reverb or a delay I want to route to, I can set that up through the sends. The cues I can use for monitoring. So if I want to send this to a, a monitoring output for musicians that need headphones, uh, I can set that up here. And then my output. So where is it going in the sense? Again, we can route these to different, but right now they're routed to the main outputs, my uh, output one and two. On the fader, I also have my record and my input enabled. So if I want to record enabled, input enabled, I can solo, I can mute, I can uh, reset overload. So if something overloads, if I see a clip, I can reset it there across the group. This is a quick starting point. Now you should be able to install Luna. You should be able to navigate through the different windows, understanding transports, uh, snapping to grid. So if you record something, if you have any questions or anything, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer them. There is a ton of stuff that I can break down to and make this a longer video and make other offshoot videos. Uh, but again, this is just the basics. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, let me know and um, I'll talk to you later. Take care everyone.